you talk about the grazing gauge, that's something really simple to do. And as you can see, there's tracks all over this field. I mean, this is wild, free ranging country. There's no fences here to keep them in. But without the grazing gauge, it's really hard to tell how much is being grazed off. But it's pretty rewarding, pretty simple. Some chicken wire with a piece over the top just staked into the ground so it can't be knocked over. But as you can see, you know, it's kind of rewarding when you see this much stuff inside that gauge where they can't get to. And then it's out this far outside, the, the, the tonnage of quality food that you provide an animal is pretty rewarding. And it's, and again, it's, you can tell what, you know, how, how good your crop performing. Steve, a rule of thumb, if a guy has got a hundred acres or 10 acres, how does a guy determine how much he's going to put in food plots? That's a great question. And, and one we often get is something that as a general rule, three to 4% of your property should be planted in a food plot. A guy with a hundred acres, three or four acres. Um, but if you can plant more, it's even better. It's something that we've got a lot of real intense guys that are up to plant eight, 10, even 12% of their property in food plot because they can produce so much tonnage on an acre of ground versus an acre of hardwoods or acres of just whatever. Uh, so yeah, they can raise the carrying capacity of their property somewhat by increasing, increasing the tonnage that they've got available in their food plots.